The WWE Endeavor merger has already seen some big changes within the company. Backstage staff, office workers, and even talent have been released from WWE in cost-cutting measures. But there are still costs that can be cut. But are these changes actually a positive for both WWE and for fans? Support WrestleTalk! On December 5th, 2023, WWE Home Video announced that it will be no longer producing home video releases. They posted on Twitter, with great sadness, we must announce that WWE have taken the decision to withdraw from the home video category. No licensing deals will be renewed worldwide after 2023. This promoted a slew of nostalgic tweets from wrestling fans, with many telling stories of home video releases, be they DVD or VHS, that were part of the fabric of their wrestling DNA. They might not be fans without them. Anecdotally, this was my first experience of wrestling back in the early 90s. I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling in my household as my mother thought that I would reenact it and get seriously hurt, but joke's on her because when wrestling was put on Channel 4 for free in 2000, I really got into backyard wrestling and well, I got hurt. Way she was right. But this VHS was the only thing I'd seen of wrestling for the longest time. And when I got into wrestling in 2000s, thanks to Sunday Night Heat being shown on Channel 4, I found a new friend at school who had loads of WWE pay-per-views on video and we spent our teenage weekends watching them. He also had videos of ECW and WCW and that's how I discovered all of those companies and all of those wrestlers as well. However, I am an elder millennial, so of course I discovered an interest through video, it's, it's what we all did. And a lot of the wrestling fans romanticizing about the death of physical media for wrestling would also be those millennials and older because, well, that's our nostalgia. Gen Xers don't know what a VHS is, that's not a TikTok. And a lot of them will discover wrestling through other means and then get their wrestling histories through a much easier source to see all of the wrestling you want, the WWE Network. The last physical releases for WWE pay-per-views will be Survivor Series 2023 in the US and Crown Jewel 2023 in the UK. House of Wrestling reached out to their WWE source about the news and they told them the home video business has long been in decline and it will no longer be a place where the company dedicates time and resources. This actually isn't the first time that WWE have cancelled home video releases of pay-per-views, as they announced in 2022 that they wouldn't be releasing DVDs and Blu-rays of pay-per-views moving forward. However, they made a last-minute decision to continue for two more years. Wrestling Inc. reached out to their sources to ask if something similar would happen this time, and they write, it doesn't appear another last-minute change is in the cards. WWE are not the only ones stopping physical media of their shows. Disney announced in August of 2023 they were no longer going to make DVDs and Blu-rays of their movies in Australia. Australia and New Zealand after the release of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Forbes wrote, while consumers will be able to buy discs currently in stock, no new shipments from Disney's vast content library, including Star Wars, Marvel Studios, and its animated classics, will be forthcoming. They'd already stopped making physical media in Latin America and select Asian markets, and Forbes continued, Disney cites declining sales as the reason. The decline of physical media, DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks, etc., has been a long-running topic in the world of entertainment. The Digital Entertainment Group reported that DVD and Blu-ray sales in the US had dropped from 1.97 billion in 2021 to 1.58 billion in 2022, a decline of 20%. And that decline has continued, with the same group reporting the first half of 2023 sales is 753 million, a drop of 70% from the same period of time year on year. If that number doubles for the second half, it would still be under the total sales in 2022. Rentals have also declined. On the other hand, streaming revenue is massively up. The first half of 2023, according to Digital Entertainment Group, is 17% up year on year, around 19 billion. But of course, what is old might become new again. Just look at the rise of popularity with vinyl in the last couple of years. But the numbers for DVDs and Blu-rays don't lie, and they spell disaster for physical media at sacrifice. And it's not just the physical media market that WWE are changing under TKO. Speaking at the UBS Media Conference on the 4th of December 2023, TKO COO Mark Shapiro said of WWE's house shows, while there's a reason to have them because it's good for the brand, we're building audience, we're putting them on in C and D counties, so we're really stretching the brand and we're kind of amassing a greater array of eyeballs from all demos, so it's good for the long-term growth. From a margin perspective, they are 
dilutive. WWE house shows, or WWE Live as they're now known, have rebadged it, you fool, are the live shows that happen in between TV tapings. These are untelevised events, and they're used as part of advertising the WWE brand. On very rare occasions, there's something big will happen at them. There was a period of time when Kevin Owens and AJ Styles swapped the United States Championship between them on house shows, but a lot of that was by accident. But most of the time, they're just used to let fans see wrestlers they like. For example, Amos has not had a match on WWE TV or pay-per-view since SummerSlam, but he wrestles regularly on house shows. Sometimes house shows can be used to trial out new gimmicks or new feuds before they debut on TV. Agents also provide feedback about the wrestlers to higher-ups about performance, which can often dictate who is going to get pushed next. The other thing that house shows provide is, to be blunt about it, fun for the wrestlers themselves. House shows don't have the same time constraints as TVs. You don't need to hit your commercial cues. You don't need to work the cameras. You can just wrestle. You can experiment with new things. For example, the People's Elbow, one of the most famous finishing moves in wrestling history, was born at house shows. It was just a move that The Rock did to make the other wrestlers laugh, particularly The Undertaker. But it got over at those house shows so Rock started doing it on TV. Dave Meltzer also notes in the December 11th Wrestling Observer Newsletter, wrestlers who came up on the independent circuit, which let's be honest is most of the WWE roster at this point, cut their teeth in front of live audiences with no TV pressures and therefore thrive in these environments. Again, speaking anecdotally as a fan, I've always had way more fun at WWE house shows than I have at TV tapings. So the question is, why cut them? One could point towards injuries and the general wear and tear of wrestlers' bodies as to why you'd want to scale back doing house shows. However, while writing about the decline of WWE's house shows in that December 11th Wrestling Observer newsletter, Dave Meltzer noted current data doesn't really answer the question as to overall safety. He looked into the injuries list of both WWE and AEW, one which does house shows and one which does not, and found out of the 142 wrestlers currently active in AEW, 12 are currently injured, or 8.5%. In WWE, there are 15 out of 169, or 8.9%. Charlotte Flair, for example, didn't get injured on the three house shows she'd wrestled leading up to the Tribute to the Troops episode of SmackDown, she got injured on the Tribute to the Troops episode of SmackDown. Fightful Select reported that the injury during the match with Asuka was real, saying she had to be helped to the back and appeared to be in pain. So if it's not for wrestlers' safety, then why cut them? If you've been watching this video long enough now, you'll probably already know the answer. The finger thing means money. WrestleNomics report via their Patreon page that WWE will run 206 shows in 2023 and notes only about 23 of those are in those C&D counties that Mark Shapiro was talking about. That's only 12% of the company's current schedule, which doesn't sound like a lot, but WrestleNomics do note in a few quarters before the pandemic, WWE reported operating losses in its live event division, meaning the division overall was unprofitable for those periods. Speaking of 12%, that's also the amount of revenue house shows brought into WWE between July of 2022 and June of 2023. TV rights, on the other hand, brought in 79% of revenue. In his speech at the media conference, Shapiro noted that the deal WWE has with Saudi Arabia is worth over $100 million per year. That's for two shows. So yeah, why would you spend money on 23 shows that you're not making a lot of money on when you can just do two shows in Saudi Arabia for way more money. They're not doing this for fans, they're doing this for cash. And more changes are likely still to come. One of the things that TKO has been quite vocal about since the merger is sponsorships. Now, I know what you're thinking. Aren't there already a lot of sponsorships on WWE TV? Do we have brand integration all over the show? The Women's War Games match was sponsored by crisps or chips for our American viewers. Shapiro noted at the conference that Vince McMahon used to see a wrestling ring like a religion. He wanted it clean. The mat was clean. The ropes were clean and not dirt, but of sponsorships. And under TKO, that will change. Shapiro argues that sponsors don't want a banner up in the building, which is what WWE previously did. They want 
activation. And that means sponsorships on the mat and sponsorship on the ropes. When talking about UFC, he said, until we get over $1 billion in sponsorship, I won't be happy. The same will apply to WWE. And while it's just C and D counties that are being cut for house shows now, more will probably be cut if they also don't perform. Which brings us to the weekly TV product. Now, that does make money. 79% of WWE's revenue is from TV rights, but that's for the show, not the look of the show or how it's made. In fact, do you know what? I'm just going to give you all of Shapiro's quote here because I think that will give you the best, the best look at what he thinks about TV production. It's a long quote, so bear with me. Just think of how many events we televise we put on. We bring the show on the road. We bring trucks out to different cities, whether it's a cloud or it's cameras or it's tape machines, replay graphics operators, stuff we can do AI back at our headquarters in either Vegas for UFC or our Stanford production facility for WWE. There are a lot of production efficiencies. Even if our production chiefs want to tell me that there's not, Frankly, I worked at ESPN for 12 years. I oversaw all production. I've been through all the song and dance with every producer who treats every tape machine and camera like it's a baby and doesn't want to give it up. And we're here to improve our margins. So we are going to scrutinize every dollar on the production end of every single one of these events and every single one of these telecasts. And we're going to realize substantial savings. The TKO merger is still new. But one thing is for sure, WWE in 24 might not look the same as it did in 2023. And we could be seeing a returning face in all of that if reports are to be believed. Check out my deep dive WrestleTalk news video about the potential WWE return for Sasha Banks. Click the video on screen right now to find out more.